Yo, what's up guys, and welcome back to our Canucks GM mode. So, in the last episode, we took on the, um, who was it, the St. Louis Blues in the Western Conference Finals, and we managed to defeat them as well in four games, just like what we did to the Edmonton Oilers. We're coming into the Stanley Cup Finals on an 11-game winning streak, apparently, as we, um, we were down 3-1 in the Ducks series, but then we won three in a row from there, and then won eight. Um, in the next two rounds, so we've won 11 in a row now, and we just need to win four more, and we've won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, so that would be amazing if we could do that. But first, before we get started with the Stanley Cup Final Simulation, there is one thing that is a very big concern going into next season, and I was looking at the contracts that we have to sign for next season, and it's not looking good because we're going to only have, I figured out, I think it was like 17 million cap space going into next, uh, well, going into the off season. And there's some big guys we need to sign this year, are coming up at least. So Ruslan Nazarov is going to want a big upgrade of contract, probably like $6 million or something because he is growing and he's still young. So we want to definitely sign him. Owen Tippett is probably somebody that we're going to be releasing during um, the offseason just because he wants probably, he'd probably want five or six million as well, I'd assume. And yeah, he doesn't produce as much, so he could probably be somebody we release. Um, then there's also Chris Wyman. I would like to try and get him back because he's a really good bottom six guy for us. Um, but I'm not 100% sure if we'll get him for sure. Um, then there's also some bigger news other than that we also have to get a bunch of AHL guys back but there is a big concern here we will not have enough salary cap to sign both Thatcher Demko and Alexis Gravel which means one of our goalies is going to have to leave and I'm thinking Thatcher Demko might be the one because if you look at Thatcher Demko's stats before we start off with the playoff stuff um during the regular season, he does not simulate the best. Like, he had one good season with us, 43 and 19. His other seasons all weren't really that good. 24 and 21, 36 and 28. Like, he gets a lot of losses. And his goals against during the regular season isn't very great either. He gets, like, about 2.5, 2.6 on average. But when it comes to the playoffs, he's a very good simulator. He plays really well, 12 and 2 in these playoffs currently, 15 and 4 last year when we won the cup, that sort of thing. So I don't know what we're gonna do if we're gonna like go with Thatcher Demko. He's also 29, and he's gonna want a lot of money. Like when I was looking, I think he wants like close to 10 million dollars or so. And then Alexis Gravel, he's definitely going to want an upgrade as well because he's only making uh, just under $2 million. He's only 25 years of age and he's an 85, but he could still grow uh, to be as good as, um, what is it, as Thatcher Demko. And he's also proven to be a legitimate starter because, as you can see right here, um, during the regular season when Demko went down with that injury, he went 26-7 and with a 2.03 goals against average, 7 shutouts, 927 save percentage. So this guy is ready to be our number one starter. Um, so let me know down below, guys, in the comments, who you think we should release during uh, free, uh, like the off season, and who we should keep. Um, just because it's going to be a very tough off season for us, and then it's going to be the same type of thing probably next season as well. Because a lot of our guys are making big money, like uh, Albuin's making like seven something, uh, Nolan Patrick's making seven something. But if we free up some cap space with some trades, we should be able to sign some players. Like, we might want to move Kevin Fiala because he's making, like, $5 million. Uh, Shea Theodore is making, like, $5 million. Um, So, yeah, anyways, before that, um, yeah, I think that was it going into the playoffs. That's all I wanted to talk about. Um, so, let's get started with game number one against Carolina. I was looking during the regular season and they were actually one of the best defensive teams in the league, just behind us, I think. Um, main reason is um, their goaltender, Datsuk. So after one, we have the lead though, one nothing as Ole Uolivi beats Alexander Datsuk. We're being outshot 10-8, second period, and okay, a lot of goals from both teams, good. So Mark Scheifele gives us a 2 nothing lead, but then we blow a 2 nothing lead, Comtois and Pedersen. Uh, tie the game up, and then Mark Scheifele with his second of the period 
second of the night, and we have a 3-2 lead going into the third. Can we lock it down defensively like what we did last series? Can we win another in a row? That would be our 12th game in a row where we won a game. And Bo Horvat makes it 4-2. That's a huge goal from Bo. He seems to come through for insurance markers like he did last series against St. Louis in the clinching game, I think it was. And your Vancouver Canucks are going to win 12 games in a row and are three games away now from winning back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. It's pretty crazy. Um, but let's not get carried away. So you will leave you from Fiala and Horvat, Shifley from Stetcher and Fiala, Shifley from Horvat and Theodore, and Horvat from Narazarov and Shifley. Um, I think the reason though we have some cap trouble going into the offseason guys is because Mark Shifley, we gave him a pretty big contract. He's making over $10 million. Um, so we might want to move him during the offseason as well kind of go through a bit of a mini rebuild just because if we want to have enough cap space to sign our younger players then we have to remove some of our vets or something like that or we could just trade away a bunch of prospects and bottom six kind of guys so let me know what you guys think we should do with that sort of thing but anyways game number two back here in vancouver and nazarov already scores well less than a minute in ruslan nazarov gets his uh, another playoff goal. He's been picking up a couple of them in this uh, playoff run. He's picked up like four or five goals now, I think. Um, he gets that one at 19-14. Shots are 10-8 for us. Second period. And okay, there's some more goals from us. So Victor Rask ties the game at one. But then Mikel Albaline, who's I think our future captain once Horvat's gone. Um, and then Troy Stetcher makes us have a two-goal lead going into the third are we going to take a 2 nothing lead on Carolina headed back into Raleigh? This is kind of surprising because Carolina was one of the best road teams, I think, during the regular season, if I remember correctly, or they were a really good road team. But they haven't managed to beat Demko. Demko's locking it down. But I think we do move Demko during the offseason, guys. No matter how he plays in the playoffs, we have to eventually move on from the Thatcher-Demko era. So we have taken a 2 nothing lead on the series and have now won 13 straight games. This is like the longest winning streak I think I've had in a GM mode before. I don't know how this team is simulating so well. Okay, I wonder if it's going to continue going into Carolina. I, I think we should at least lose one game because... You know, it has to happen eventually. So, game number three in Carolina. Can we win 14 in a row? And we have a 2-1 lead after the first period. Holy crap. This team never stops. So, Elias Lindholm makes it one nothing for Carolina. Owen Tippett ties the game at 1. And then Sam Bitten, who won us the Stanley Cup last year with his clutch goal in the third, I think it was, makes it a 2-1 game. Second period. And we have another 2 goal lead going into the third. Damn, are we going to have a chance to sweep three straight series series like after coming back from uh that three one deficit in anaheim our team's just been like on the ball so troy stetcher gives us a three one lead going into the third shots are 21 18 in favor of us let's see if we could just lock it down like we what we did last game so penalty kill and we kill off good power play and we score holy crap nolan patrick four one for us Demko's just playing like a beast. I think Demko's going to win the Conn Smythe if we win our cup again. Wow. This might be my first GMO where we have a chance to repeat a Stanley Cup. So, 4-1 victory in game number 3. And we are one win away from winning a Stanley Cup. So, that's 14 games in a row now that we've won. Owen Tippett from uh, Patrick and Albaline. Bitten from Wyman and Theodore. Stetcher from Uolivi and Wyman, and Patrick from Stetcher. So, those are the player stats. Three stars in that game. Thatcher, Demko, Troy Stetcher, and Nolan Patrick. Okay, so... Okay, we have an injury, and it's not a good one. So, it looks like Liljegren is going to miss the remainder of the season with a pole groin. He's returning June the 6th. I think that's at the end of the season. And we have no depth defenders, so hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us in the ass. Um, so I will put in... Who do we want to put in? I have only depth forwards. Who has the best defensive stats out of all these guys? 82 defensive awareness. 85 for Endress. Wow. 
It's actually pretty good. 83 for Vegnolo. So Endress, you're gonna play depth defense. So even though you're not a defender, you have some good defensive statistics. So we're gonna give you a chance to play defense. And looks like Lilsgren will be uh, watching from the press box, I guess, if we have a chance to win the Stanley Cup. Cause yeah, he will. Even if it goes seven games this series, um, he won't be back on time. So. Um, thank you though for your help here in the playoffs, Lilsgren. I think you were putting up a decent amount of assists. So, game number four, can we sweep our third straight series and win our second straight Stanley Cup? That would be amazing if we could do that. So, we're going to slow some the entire game just in case we have a chance to win it. And Kevin Fiala beats Datsuk and it's 1-0, but Aho answers right back. And we have a tie game, but Mark Scheifele taking us back that lead here in the first period. And now we have a 3-1 lead, holy crap, it's Troy Stetcher and Fiala, holy shit, this team's just like destroying every single team in its path. How do you get five goals in the first period? <laughs> holy, I don't think I've ever seen that much goals, so Alexander Datsuk is <clears throat> just getting lit up, five goals on 12 shots, he's probably getting pulled for the second period, but it looks like we're going to go on to winning. Our second straight Stanley Cup unless we blow the lead and Shea Theodore starts off the second with another goal. Six to one now. Beating Matt Murray who's now in net. Wow. I'm really surprised I haven't managed to make a team that can win back to back Stanley Cups. Nick Moutry makes it 7-1. Damn if we blow it a 7-1 lead into the third though that would be pretty crazy. Shots are 22-22. I'm going to put it down to four time simulation so it's now 7-2. Is Victor Ras gets one for Carolina. Trying to tell their fans to be more um, into the game, I guess, even though they're not going to be. Power play. It's a long one, and we score. <laughs> Chris Wyman makes it 8 to 2. Damn, this is a crazy simulation right now. So I might have to intervene the game so we can watch the last little bit. Or I am going to have to once it gets down to like the last two minutes of the game. And then you guys could watch us uh, celebrate our second straight Stanley Cup win. Yeah, here you go. Intervene, and we'll put a CPU versus CPU. So we're gonna win it. We're gonna win three straight series by a score of four nothing. That's crazy. Wow. And this one's our first Stanley Cup win on in like uh, a different team's building. So, anyways, I'll let you guys watch, and I'll see you guys back up here in a bit. If you're just with us, it's been a tremendous bit of hockey so far, and more to come. And they've won the faceoff. Gains the zone. Through the corner now. Marvelous save. No time on that one. Not a lot of room to score from in that area. Great save. Carolina's going to take this time to make a goaltender change. Oh. Tie up there and a good reach and possession. The Hurricanes wheel it up the wing. Huge hit. Possession's gone. If you're here to watch physical hockey, well, there you go. Press to the glass. Loose puck brought in by Skinner. What a save. Considering the shooter, that's usually in. Scrum over. Puck kicked. Puck covered. Whistle blown. Draw the tie up and his team prevails. A whistle and a rest. Grab the two centermen tied up, but there was a good reach there. Possession now on the pickup by Spurgeon. 
laid on to Rask. Up the wing, he keeps on going. The boards are there to be used, and he does it with that pass. The Canucks want to generate something up the wing. Last minute of play in the third period of a pretty decisive game. The Canucks have been hoping for a streak like this from them for some time. But how could they imagine it would go on for this long? Another excellent night adding to this lengthy point scoring streak. They win the draw. Hammer blocked away. Good defensive work there. Turn the shot on now. He scores! Two in a row. You could see and feel the defensive players were just running out of gas. They were running around their own zone. You got to tip your helmet to the offensive players for that shift. They really had it coming. Edzo, good airtime on this pass. Flat when it lands and the shooter has a walk-in. Last minute to go in the third. Has gone back into his own end. He's got him against the glass. Kicked out of the scrum. The Canucks look to make a difference up the wing. Decides on the area behind. The Hurricanes have moved to the neutral zone. Big hit. Possession gone. Got he oh, great save there. Not much room to work, but he got a good shot away. Uh, with this puck being so close to that, this is all a reactionary save. Let's it go. Presented since 1893. In their imagination, it never looked as good as it will. The Stanley Cup about to be theirs. Good face-off win. And the game is over. The series is over. Vancouver's won the Stanley Cup. Do you believe the celebration going on? A traditional congratulations of a handshake goes back five centuries in humanity. But for hockey, it's become one of the most prized moments. Congratulating those who have gone so far. The man chosen playoff MVP gets the Conn Smythe Trophy. Boy, is this ever well deserved. It's often said it's the hardest prize to win because it takes eight weeks. And by tradition, the captain is the first to hold it high. So guys, we have won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups with a 9-2 victory. I don't even know how we simulated so well in like the last half of the playoffs, well, the entire playoffs almost. Cuz like the first series we were down literally 3-1, we were on the brink of elimination. And then the team's like, you know what, we're going to just go on a three-game winning streak and eliminate the Ducks. After that happens, they end up winning every single game in the playoffs remaining, sweeping the Oilers, or I should say Connor McDavid in the Oilers, then sweeping the St. Louis Blues in Vladimir Tarasenko, and then sweeping the Carolina Hurricanes to win a second straight Stanley Cup, so... Here's a look at the stats from that game. So Kevin Fiala from Horvat and Shifley. Shifley from Stetcher and Fiala. Stetcher from Yolevi and Reichel. Fiala from Shifley and Stetcher. Shifley from Fiala. Theodore from Fiala. Mutri from Reichel and Samuelson. Uh, Wyman from Nazarov and Fiala. Zaka from Patrick and Alboin. So a really good last game. 9-2 victory. Even though we got outshot, it was a great performance from Thatcher Demko, who ended up winning the Conn Smythe for us. Um, here's the three stars. So Fiala gets first star with two goals, four assists. I don't even know how he gets six points in that game. He's trying to tell me that he shouldn't be traded during the offseason. Um, and then Mark Schleifle with two goals, two assists. 
gets second star, and Troy Stetcher with three points gets third star. So a very good team performance in that last game, especially uh, to seal the deal and win our second straight Stanley Cup. Um, let's take a look at the awards for the season and who retired, and we'll also check the player stats for the entire playoffs for us. And yeah, that will be it pretty much. We'll do a little season wrap-up, I guess. So damn, back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, and we got a President's Trophy this season, and we had a President's Trophy two seasons ago. So, um, probably this Canucks GM mode, if we, like, might come to an end, like, in a month or so. Like, I might end it just a bit before September starts, because we're turning our team into a dynasty, and, like, basically, it's, if we're just gonna keep on doing really good... It's pointless to keep, to keep on doing a simulation of this GM mode, so, um, well, it wouldn't be that bad. Maybe we could go for three, I don't know, but we should probably think about ending it kind of soon because our team's just been playing really, really well, so we won the Stanley Cup and the Lee Valley Phantoms won the AHL's Calder Cup, so let's take a look at the awards and then we'll check our player stats and then we'll also sim up to the draft and see who retired and then that will be it and then you guys also let me know what you think with some of the off-season moves that we should do because we need to start thinking about the off-season more now now after we won the Stanley Cup we need to think of who's going to be moved out are we going to move out Thatcher Demko who won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups are we going to move out somebody else like Kevin Fiala who just had a really good last game to help us win that Stanley Cup so that type of thing so, back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions, your Vancouver Canucks. Um, Arizona won it back-to-back -back seasons before then. That's kind of interesting, too. Um, President's Trophy, as you can see, was us again. As you can see, we won two of the last three President's Trophies. Um, and back-to-back -back Clarence S. Campbell's for the Western Conference champions. Um, a player award. So, Art Ross went to Patrick Kane. Hart went to Patrick Kane. Ryan Merkley wins his second-in-a-row James Norris Trophy. Patrick King gets the bing. The Calder goes to Tyrone Oliver, I think his name was. He was drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Thatcher Demko gets the Conn Smythe. He could have got it easily last year as well, but Albuline just had a really, really good playoffs. Um, Vesna goes to Samuel Montebo. Samuel Montebo also gets the Jennings, well, him and Calvin Pickard. Logan Stanley gets the Bill Masterton. The Selkie goes to Bo Horvat again. That's like the sixth or eighth year, I think. Ted Lindsay goes to Patrick Kane, and Maurice Richard goes to Vladimir Tarasenko. Let's check the AHL. I think there was yeah, one player, Vince Melkolaski, our um, prospect defenseman. This guy's going to be in the NHL probably next season, which means we might need to move out somebody like Shea Theodore, but he is the best defenseman in the AHL for this season. So that's that let's just quickly check who did what for us in the playoffs and yeah then we'll simulate like i said up to the draft even though this is a bit of a longer episode i'm trying to keep you guys guessing who if we won the stanley cup or not so um let's see so kevin fiala had 22 points in 19 games so he was probably going to be the second best uh runner up for the con smythe um, Nolan Patrick 17 Zaka 15 Stetcher 15 Shifley 15 Horvat 14 Albuline 13, nowhere near as good as last year, but whatever. Lozgren 12, Theodore 11, Samuelson 11, Yolivi 9, Tibbet 8, Reichel 8, Wyman 7, Nazarov 7, uh, Bitten 5, Mutri 4, Anders 1, and Janus nothing. But I just realized Nazarov's game winning goal, though, in that game 7, without Nazarov getting that goal. Because it was in overtime as well. If he would not have scored that, we would not have won the Stanley Cup. So this guy is definitely going to be our future number one defenseman. We're going to hold on to him as long as we can. Um, so yeah, that's the player stats for the playoffs. Um, now I'm going to just do a little jump ahead um, video edit uh, to the retirement screen. And see you guys in a sec. Okay guys, so we're up here with the draft lottery results. So as you can see, the Buffalo Sabres get the first overall pick this year, followed by New Jersey and Tampa Bay as the top three. Now on to the retirement players. Who did who retired for anybody in the NHL? None from us, it looks like. Yep, nobody from our team retired. So that is good news. However, let's see around the entire league. So Patrick Kane, after having such a good like 
uh, last few seasons, he retires. Um, Jamie Ben retires. Claude Giroux retires. Jonathan Taves. A lot of the older guys. Cam Atkinson. That's sort of idea. Um, what about goalies? No, I don't want to go to play teams. I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to go by goalies next. There you go. So goalies to Garask, Jonathan Bernier, Michael Hutchinson, Mike Condon. After that, nobody else really. So anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of our Canucks GMO. So in the next episode, we'll do the draft in the off season. Let me know what you think we should do with like trades and all that sort of stuff. So thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.